Hey everybody, it's your favorite teacher, Mr. Jacobson, coming back to you somewhere in L.A. And uh, we have a, a lot to talk about today. We have the artists of the Renaissance, which we will be discussing. And um, as you can see, there's a lot of artists here. We're only going to talk maybe about half of these people. So don't freak out uh, and don't feel like you have to know everything about all these people because you don't. The ones I do talk about in this today's lecture, those are the ones you need to know stuff about. And underneath it has a few things, kind of like with their accomplishments and what they were known for, etc. So, let us begin. Okay. So, the first we have Jan van Eyck. And uh, Jan is, uh, he's one that got really well known for perfecting the technique of oil painting. He is thought to have been born in the village of, let's see, so the village of Maesic in Belgium. Van, Van Eyck was considered the leading painter of his day. He painted mostly portraits and religious uh, subjects. He captured subjects in minute detail. Uh, notice the detail of the floor tiles and the chancellor's robe, as you can see here. A lot of really nice detail he added. Most artists are very much known for their attention to detail. They're usually perfectionists, and those of you who are artistic and know that uh, perfectionism is is uh, it could be a, a blessing and a curse. So here we go. Here's some famous works that he's done. You can take a look at that if you like. So more of his famous works, the Annunciation. Okay, so Botticelli. So Sandro Botticelli was a Italian artist from Florence. Botticelli's most famous works are uh, Primavera and The Birth of Venus, although he also painted many Christian religious subjects. So Primavera depicts the arrival of spring. It is thought to have been painted for Lorenzo di... Big words here. Pier Francesco de Medici, a son of Lorenzo the Magnificent. And as you can see, more skin, which was common in the in the uh, Renaissance period. I'm just going to let you go ahead and read this as well. This is just more more pictures about the Primavera. In uh, 1481. Uh, Botticelli was commissioned by Pope Sixtus to uh, to point the to paint the walls of the Sistine Chapel. He also illustrated Dante's Inferno. Botticelli spent all his life in Florence, except for his visit to Rome. And uh, in Florence, Botticelli was a protege of the Medici family. Botticelli remained little known for centuries. After his death, his works was rediscovered in the 19th century. So, like most great artists, you really don't get appreciated until you're dead. A few, there are a few exceptions. Bocelli produced little or no paintings during the last 10 years of his life. It was not until 350 uh, years later, his death, that the world recognized Bocelli's contribution to art. So, here is Adoration of the Magi and... Go ahead and just finish that up, and we're going to finish up Botticelli here. A lot of really nice pieces Botticelli did. And more. Okay. So Leonardo da Vinci painted two most famous paintings in the world, the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. Leonardo was the perfect example of a Renaissance man, that is, someone who excels in a variety of fields. He was a painter, a scientist, an inventor, an engineer, a mathematician, a sculptor, an architect, a botanist, and writer. Um, only 15 of uh, Leonardo da Vinci's paintings still exist, unfortunately. The Lady of Ermine is one of the only four portraits of the women that uh, da Vinci painted. So here we go, as you can see, some of the pieces that he did. Of course, here's the famous Mona Lisa and The Last Supper you've probably seen before as well. Those are very famous. And a little closer up there, here's some more pieces. You can look at these 
in uh, in your own time. I'm just gonna go pretty quick through here. A lot of people are, are still painting uh, pieces that are somewhat religious, have some event from the Bible, usually the New Testament, that kind of typifies or announces or somehow related to Jesus Christ. So, Another person is Albrecht Dürer. Dürer is a German painter, printmaker, and mathematician. He lived in Nuremberg, Germany. He showed great diversity in his art, both in subject matter and form. He painted both religious and secular uh, subjects. He lived between two important art centers, Italy and the Netherlands, and learned from both. His woodcuts and engravings were known throughout Europe and influenced many other artists. One of my most favorite, uh, this, is probably, this is my most favorite story um, from the Renaissance. It's this right here. If you have a chance, I highly encourage you to read it. It's not that long. And it is a very touching story about uh, Dürer and um, gives you why this famous painting that he labeled hands, later it was called the prayer, praying hands, but whose hands these were and why did he think they were worth uh, his time to paint, being such a a prestigious painter in his years. So pause it and read that. It, you, it's well worth it, I, I assure you. So here's some other pieces that he did, including the Four Horsemen. Here's some others. Very talented. Okay, so Raphael. Raphael was an Italian painter and architect of the Renaissance. He received his training from his father. Raphael died at the age of 37. Many of his works are in the Vatican, and his paintings are serene and harmonious. Raphael, Michelangelo, Leonardo, uh, da Vinci are called the three great artists of the high Renaissance. So here are some pieces of Raphael as well. It's so sad this this artist died at such a young age. It, it just goes to show that this this promising individual, maybe he could have done a lot more good had his time been longer on earth. Beautiful, just beautiful murals. Okay, Michelangelo. Michelangelo is a printer, a painter, a sculptor, a poet, an engineer. His most famous sculptors the Pieta and David were done before he was 30. Due to political upheavals in Italy, Michelangelo traveled and worked in many cities, including Venice, Florence, Bologna, <laughs> and Rome. I know it's not Bologna. Hold on, let me let me think here. Oh, that's right. It's called Bologna. Isn't that interesting? Uh, you're like, you do realize there's a G in this word, right? But anyway, yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know that stuff you put on your, your, your sandwich sometimes? Um, yeah, it's not Bologna. Probably should be because that's the way it sounds, but it's really bologna with no E at the Anyway. So, anyway, Florence, uh, bologna in Rome. In, uh, in 1505, Pope Julius II invited Michelangelo to Rome to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. This will probably be, it's arguably, the greatest Renaissance work of all time. So here's the the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, and they didn't get the whole thing e even. And you can see all the work he did. Here's the, excuse me, the centerpiece that he put in here. And he did this while, well, I mean, they didn't create the <laughs> the ceiling and then he, and they flipped it upside down so he could paint it. He, he had to get ladders and paint and everything, and he painted it, you know, looking up the whole time. It was, uh, it was quite a feat, to say the least. So here's some more things, including the last judgment that he has. 
like I said, in the Renaissance, there's just a lot of biblical references and paintings. Here's the creation of Adam. Half-nude people. <laughs> a lot of it. Uh, Taishun was born in Venice. He became a student of Bellini's uh, Venetian school of painting. Venetian is, is another word for Venice. So Taishun was the most versatile uh, artist of the Renaissance. He showed equal talent in portraits, landscapes, religious and mythological paintings. Taishun was one of the most influential artists of his time. He is known for bold colors and bold brush strokes. His style of painting changed so much that his early and later works appear to be done by different artists. So here are some of his pieces. A lot of people like to do a painting of the Annunciation. Interesting, huh? And that's it. So we're pretty much done for today. So go ahead and uh, make that uh, summary and do it well, everybody. Don't just try to make a page and uh, and not include Taishin or anybody at the end and, and end at, uh, <laughs> at uh, Durer or any others. Give a full summary. So you've done your job and you've done it well. And, uh, and I promise you, if you do it well, then it will benefit you when it comes time for the test. So until then, we will, uh, we will see you. So we'll see you Monday. Bye-bye.